Hey guys, welcome back. So in this one, we're gonna go ahead and uh, customize a few things in our admin and also set up documentation for our API just so it can be easy to use for both the front-end developers of which it's still gonna be us today and uh, also for the admin users. So to get started, we want to be able to add we want to be able to add other fields here like when this was created on the list. We want to enable a way to search for these if there are many and also I'm going to show you how you can add pagination if there are like many records in the in the admin. So let's start with the campaign. So let me bring up the code. So if we go to our app, our campaigns app, we have the admin.py file. What we did was simply register our models to be able to show in the admin. We can be able to customize this one better using the model admin. So the, so the way that works is we create a class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a class or it's going to be a model admin class. So it's going to do, so let's do class. Let's start with the campaign. So it's going to be campaign model admin. And we, we have to inherit from model admin and we get that from admin dot model admin. So what we want is to be able to, sh to set up fields that should show here. And we do that by specifying a list display property. And we set that to an e treble. So, we so we're gonna wanna see the title. Let's also make it able that you can see the created art. Just so we can see the time that it was created. Also, I'm gonna add updated art. So once you create a custom model admin for the model, what you always wanna do is still register it on the admins admin with the model itself. So the way we do that is first we pass the the model itself and then we pass the admin class as the second one. And you can see from this signature here that the second has to be an admin class and it should be of title model admin. So let me save this and now if we go to the to our server and refresh, you can be able to see that now we have created that and updated that. So I'm also going to show you how to add a search field just so a user can be able to search. So still on the properties, you have to specify search underscore fields. So that also is going to be an iterable. So let's enable the search by the title. Also, let's enable the search by the description. Okay, so let's check that. So I'm going to come and refresh. I noticed that now we have a field that can enable us to search and I can pretty much search by anything. So I can pretty much enter anything and it's gonna try to match titles and the descriptions. So here you can see that in the description we have test. So if you came back to our list and put in test, let's put in TES and do a search. You can see that we still match the this very campaign. So let me change this to something that wouldn't exist like YOLO. Hopefully this doesn't and search. You can see that this doesn't exist and the search is working. So another thing I wanna show you is how to add pagination. So let's remove the search because it's kind of limiting. So let's say we had two campaigns. So I'm going to click add and uh, let's add another one. So let's save this. So let's say we had very many of these, let's say like a hundred or more, and we wanted to enable pagination on them. What you can do is on the model admin. So right here, you can specify a property called list per page. So list per page. And you can see all the properties that are available here through the editor autocomplete. So what we want is list per page and we can set that to a number. So if we set it to one in our case, since we don't have many and uh, come back to our, our our admin, I'm going to refresh here and you can see that we have the pagination added. So that's how you add it. So if we click on page two, you should be able to see that we see page two. If we go on page one, you can see page one and you can enable all of them. So that's how you add pagination. If you had very many records here, that's when it would be useful, but that's how you go about it. So moving on, we are going to go to our subscribers and on the subscribers, we want to do the same thing, but we also want to be able to search subscribers by the campaign they subscribe to. So that kind of raises a situation where we need to work with the, the foreign keys. So let's go ahead and see how that one works. So I'm going to go here and create another mod admin for the subscriber model. So I'm just going to copy and replace this since we pretty much know what this is about and just copy this. Then let's rename campaign to model. So we want to be able to show the email and uh, when someone subscribed. Okay. 
So we prim we can say we can say we want to show the email and then the campaign that someone subscribed to. So let me just change this one to campaign. And also the maybe when they they sign they signed up or they subscribed. So let's change this one to created that. Okay, and we're gonna keep these as the same fields in the search, just so we can I can illustrate the problem better. So I'm gonna do this. So after we specify the model admin, we also want us we want to send it to the register fun through the register function. So let's bring it here and save. And now if we go back here and refresh, we have the created that, we have the search fields. But one thing I wanna show you here is, let's say we try to search for something like conf. So I'm gonna put conf here and click enter. Notice that we get an error that says that related field got an invalid lookup. And that's typically because by default, whenever we by default, whenever we use a foreign key, if we don't specify a related field, it goes ahead to use the ID. And here, basically what we need to do is specify the field it should search by in the related model. So in the campaign, we need to specify a field it should search by when we are defining the search fields. So here where we have search fields and we have campaigns, we want to be able to search by the campaign's title, but the campaigns is a model and the title is an attribute on that. So what we need to do is we can use this syntax here and at the end we put the, the, the field we want to search by in the related model. So if we save this and come back around, I'm gonna, refer, I'm gonna search again. You should be able to see that now we match and we don't really get an error. So let's search and the search is working. Okay, so that's okay, that's good. So the next thing you're gonna need to do now is uh, to set up documentation for our API. And since we are using Django REST framework, the easiest way to get documentation up and running is to use DRF YASIG. Now I've used this in several of my videos. It's really a good one. And uh, we are just gonna stick with that and add our documentation. So to use DRF YASIG to document our API, we're gonna go to DRF YASIG. Let's go to its documentation and take a look at what uh, we need to do. So I'm gonna open it up. So we need to install DRF YASIG. So I'm gonna copy this and go to the terminal. I'll stop the server and run pip install DRF YASIG. And as it installs, I'm gonna come back around here. So what we need to do is add it to our installed apps. So just Django knows about it. Uh, so we're gonna go to our settings py and scroll to where we have installed apps. So right here, I'm actually gonna put it on top of our custom app. So if you go to the documentation, basically what you need to do is to specify a schema view and then we can hook in the URLs where we want our documentation to be. So it's gonna be, we're just gonna use the boilerplate that they give in the, in the documentation. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, go to urls.py. So here we can define the URL patterns. We are just gonna keep on the one path, the one that serves the Swagger documentation. We want to listen for when a user goes to the homepage and then we wanna serve the documentation to them. So let me remove this. So right now, what we have is we have a URL patterns with a path. So I'm gonna copy this path here and take it to our main URL patterns. So over here, we can paste there the path for the documentation and save that. So let's look at the schema view. So basically the schema view, it enables us to specify some meta information for our API. So we're just gonna change this to be not snippets, but campaign manager. Yeah, so now if you go back to our application, I'm gonna go to here and go to the home route. Oh, our server is actually off. So let me bring it back up. So the server is now on. So if you go back to here and refresh, you can see that we have the documentation being served and everything is good, uh, yeah. So we now have the documentation that our front end will use. So we'll be using this endpoint here to get a list of campaigns that will show on our next year's front end. Then the detail endpoints that we will make a call to that will give us the details of the campaign and the subscribe. So we're gonna be making a post request from our form from the front end. So now our API is done. We have everything on our Django setup. So what's left here is to maybe do set up some, some cores to enable, to enable access from different domains. So hopefully later I can show how to deploy this to app platform. 
so you guys can put it on a live environment so in the next one we're gonna start working on our next js front end so if it helped you give it a thumbs up don't forget to sub and i'll talk to you in the next video